The Programmer's Model. Each microprocessor comes with a unique programmer's model. It is a map or a diagram of all the CPU's internal registers. All programmer's model contain the same basic types of registers. Some all-purpose registers, some pointer registers, and a status register. Let's look at a sample programmer's model, in this case for one of Freescale's processors. First it has a set of all-purpose registers. These registers are used to temporarily store all kinds of values, such as counts, measurements from input devices, or results of arithmetic or logical operations. For this processor, there are three all-purpose registers, A, B, and D. The register name that the assembler uses will always be shown in the model. The model will also show you the number of bits per register. Here you can see the least significant bit, or bit zero, and the most significant bit, bit seven for A and B, and bit 15 for D. This means that this processor has two 8-bit and one 16-bit registers available for general use. Notice also the way the programmer's model shows these registers. They're attached. This means that they actually share the same physical space in the CPU. In other words, if we store something in register A and then store something different in register D, the value from A would be overwritten and lost. Next, there's a set of pro pointer registers. These registers are always the same size as the processor's address bus. That means they can point to any address within the system's memory map. For this processor, we can see that there are four pointer registers, two index registers, IX and IY, and a stack pointer, and a program counter. Each of these pointer registers is 16 bits wide and is allocated its own physical space in the CPU. We'll talk about what these registers are used for in a minute. The all-purpose and pointer registers are used all the time when writing assembler programs. We use them to read, write, and store information, to do arithmetic and logical operations, to access memory, and all kinds of other tasks but it's the status register that allows us to control events and make decisions within our program. As its name implies, the status register reports on the results or status of the last operation that was executed by the processor. Here it's called the condition code register, and you can see that each of the eight bits is treated separately. In this case, three of the eight bits are used to control certain system operations, while the other five report back on the status of an operation. In any programmer's model, you'll find the same three types of pointer registers. The first is called either the instruction pointer or the program counter. This register identifies the next instruction to be executed and is automatically updated as each instruction in a program is executed. The stack pointer is used to keep track of the next pre-location in a temporary storage area called the stack. More about this in a later unit. Finally, you'll find at least one index register. Although each of these registers can be used as an all-purpose register, the main purpose of an index register is to point to one memory location within a block or an array of data. Think of the index register as an array's index. It allows easy movement between and access to any element within that block. The main purpose of the status register is to report on the results of the last operation. To do this, it uses a number of bits to indicate whether the last operation caused certain conditions to occur. It monitors for negative and zero results, as well as values that exceed the range of both signed and unsigned numbers. A result is considered negative if its most significant bit is set. If this occurs, then the negative bit usually indicated by the letter N, is set to a 1. Otherwise, it's 0. A result is considered to be 0 if every bit in that value is 0. If this occurs, then the 0 bit, usually represented by the letter Z, is set to a 1. Otherwise, it's cleared. A result has overflowed if it is outside the range of signed numbers. Remember that sign numbers use the most significant bit as a sign bit and the remaining bits for the actual number. That means for an 8-bit register, if the, 
answer is less than minus 128, which is minus 2 to the 7, or greater than 127, which is 2 to the 7 minus 1, then the overflow bit will be set to a 1. If it's within that range, it will be cleared. For a 16-bit register, the allowable range is minus 2 to the 15, all the way up to 2 to the 15 minus 1. If the result is outside that range, the overflow bit will be set. Similarly, a result has carried if it is outside the range of unsigned numbers. Remember that unsigned numbers use all available bits for the actual number. That means for an 8-bit register, if the answer is less than 0 or greater than 255, which is 2 to the 8 minus 1, the carry bit will be set to a 1. If it's within that range, it will be 0. For a 16-bit register, the allowable range is 0 to 2 to the 16 minus 1. If the result is outside that range, the carry bit will be set. A few of the bits in the status register are used to control system events. Most commonly, these bits are used to enable or disable system interrupts. So what does the programmer's model do for us? It lets us know a few things. First, what registers we have to work with. Next, the size of each register. And finally, how the data is organized within the register. Most importantly though, it provides us with the information we need in order to write efficient assembler code.